Welcome to the presentation Automation in Marketing, Publishing and of course here also Product Communication. It will be about best practices, possibilities, but I would also like to flag up some of the limits to this and um, present an all-rounder, an all-round overview of the various methods of automation. Before I get started, a brief introduction. I am uh, a system selection consultant for web-based marketing solutions and there I specialize in regional retail marketing but also publishers corporate publishing and uh, web to print portals that I support in selecting the right system. Then uh, connected to this, I also publish uh, reference books. Then I have a, uh, a portal, an expert portal, and uh, embedded is a reference book. So this is the label for the 140 systems represented. And I've uh, published a reference book since uh, 2014. That's the fifth edition now. It's regularly updated. Well, if you're interested, uh, you can leave me with your business card and I will send you a copy. Watch out, it's going to be a printed copy, but of course you can also download it for free from the website. Well, um, our topics today, what is automation? And I want to focus on the various uh, automation methods today, starting with content first, all the way down to data hubs, headless systems, which uh, opportunities or possibilities do I have and linked with some practical examples. We cannot speak about automation without talking about AI. <laughs> um, this is no longer possible. Um, uh, no later than Chat GPT, and this is uh, um, Chet, I use Chat GPT to come up with this definition. Here, automation is <laughs> explained with automate. Well, it is a text generator after all, and everything I it produces needs to be verified. You cannot actually take everything um, for for uh, granted and true. Um, but it's great um, to get inspiration when I sit in front of an empty piece of paper, pre-formulations that I can easily process. Chat GPT uh, was pre-trained with uh, texts uh, uh, until 2021, but there are also text generators uh, that uh, can be used uh, for companies specifically. AX Semantics, for instance, would be an example. In this particular case, this AI platform is trained um, specific to the company. So there are employees used to um, enter the uh, company-specific terminology. In e-commerce, there are more and more web shops um, that uh, exclusively uh, use uh, AI-generated texts because uh, this allow me, allows me to cover a high number of products in uh, many languages. Well, the aim, um, we want to save time and costs, uh, push efficiency and uh, quality. These are the benefits that are stated time and again that I want to generate with automation. In terms of AI, I distinguish between rules-based uh, artificial intelligence and uh, the self-learning or self-optimizing uh, machine-based uh, uh, AI. Rules-based uh, has been around for a long time, for decades, I could say. They're represented here. It's a matter of definition. I define AI as such, and rules-based systems are also part of AI, to my mind. When I have rules-based systems, then I set the parameters by which the system is to work and I have to enter these manually. Uh, in contrast to this, with machine learning systems, I have a self-optimizing system which uh, corrects itself and uh, generates optimized uh, releases. 
fact is that uh, this is not always uh, desired. Uh, it may well be, and this is why we always have a close look at this when we generate templates. So when I have one of the same task that I enter into an AI platform, then as a rule with rules based AI, I actually get the same result. With self-optimizing platforms, though, it's system inherent to get uh, different results generated because they constantly adapt or are adapted. We, especially in the creative segment, AI does um, incredible surprising things. We looked at the text generators, translations, generation of graphs and images. So the creative segment is particularly affected but also product data and media data management can be handled uh, more quickly and efficiently by AI by generating the metadata or uh, generate uh, texts on the basis of metadata. And um, we now see an enormous number of effects also in the area of template uh, generation and we will have a number of examples later. So which are the methods available for automation? We start with content first and a standardization. The consistent central data management. This is an important point of departure for automation. And uh, I have two different approaches available here either. I can say I have one and the same content structure for my individual media channels. I have print and web here in the chart, but you can have more. Or I have different content structures, which uh, I have to maintain specifically to the media channel especially in the area of product communication. And this is the uh, example of Vago. I think they're also represented here at the print day. So when I'm in the web shop here, then I have the facet search uh, by which I can filter products. And this structure is then also existed in the PIM system. And then, of course, for releasing the product data, but also for releasing print documents. So this means I have a strong simplification because I do not have many content structures that I need to maintain, but only one. It's slightly different, and I think that this is a trend that uh, we've uh, identified um, is a trend in product communication. When I'm in marketing or in publishers, corporate publishing, and look at uh, data management there, uh, I often have different content structures. For instance, for print or for the web channel, there are brief texts, long texts. There are different release structures. And um, when you look at uh, barrier-free websites, then this is a very important topic because um, I have very, very close uh, channels or corridors in which I can move. When I'm in a print document, it makes no difference if the heading is an image. <laughs> But uh, when I want to release this to the web channel, then this is, of course, not possible. Here, in future, we will rather um, continue seeing these different uh, structures. But what uh, is decisive, whether I have consistent or different uh, product structures, this really depends on the area of application. But the most important thing is that 
I actually complete the content channel 100% before I release to the media channels because this is the point where I can achieve the automation. I push the button, connect the uh, data with the templates or with rules and then produce the automatic release. And for authors, for editors, uh, for clerks, so this is very often a fundamental change in their way of working to just move about in, in the content area. We all know this. So when we uh, generate a print document, for instance, then you look at the uh, release documents and then uh, you see, uh, finally see what you would like to have changed or re-edited. And this, is, this should not be the case here. And this is uh, the important aspect that uh, needs to be considered when you want to achieve automation. Yes, yes, you may uh, interrupt me with questions. Question without a mic cannot be interpreted. The gentleman is saying that uh, actually in the various lectures he has heard um, that there are various approaches to obtain automation and that the second uh, pathway is also acceptable whereas in the past uh, only pathway one was recommended. PIM, everything focused on PIM in the past. And the second loop, the second version uh, was uh, actually discarded in the past. Because uh, you want to keep all of the data in a central place to have the single source of truth. Well, yes. Um, a very good pointer and an objection. This would be my last chart where I actually share your view saying that the first level should be um, aspired. You're pr perfectly right. And this is why I mention the areas of marketing and uh, corporate publishing. Uh, where this trend is strongest, where there is a very strict separation between the individual channels. This is product specific. And in view of automation, uh, it should always be aspired to achieve the first level. But uh, when I look at publishers' corporate publishing, the segment, I doubt whether we will ever achieve this. But again, what's important is to note uh, that when I have different content structures, then I have to remain in content management so that I finalize on the database level. I think this is an important point that uh, I have a different content composition that I do but then actually release it in an automatic fashion. This is important. Instead of uh, going through uh, an endless number of proofreading loops, but uh, actually stay centrally in the data management. Here, another content first example. This is a marketing portal, content first uh, on a personalized level. This is a marketing portal of a car dealer. Uh, Cooper is, glaube ich, the Volkswagen concern, the Volkswagen group, who, who's uh, familiar with this. And these car dealers log into the marketing portals and uh, want to have advertising campaign for uh, leasing. Here, I, on a one-off basis, can enter data 
the uh, leasing rates, uh, mileage of the vehicle, for instance. And these individual entries are then linked uh, with selected advertising materials and then actually released automatically. Without this uh, campaign automat or this automatic campaigning, uh, you would have to actually order each advertising material individually in a personalized fashion. And here I centralize the individual entries and the different media channels are displayed online banner, Facebook ad, uh, a billboard, a radio, or a vehicle wrapping. What are the limits to this? Well, the uh, advertising materials um, uh, should not be too diverse in terms of format. When I have uh, entries that fit an online banner, it is difficult to scale it up to a full page uh, newspaper or magazine ad. So this should be synchronized. The whole thing can be actually done at the push of a button <laughs> for the lazy ones or I save it in a, a list and can then actually re-edit the individual advertising materials. And then um, this is released to the media booking fully automatically when I have Google Ads or Facebook, for instance. Then I would actually um, po uh, display the several packages of uh, budgets and then this is automatically pushed over through the channels. Well, then um, we have uh, another point to touch upon. And this is uh, dynamic publishing. Basically, we have three different ways of production for dynamic publishing for, and that is linking uh, data sources with release documents. What we see here is InDesign with the print plugin. Many of you will probably know this. And here automatically product information, article components uh, are actually introduced into the template. The advantage is that uh, I can edit the document in InDesign and uh, after the editing I can finalize it. And the second uh, option is uh, linking product data with templates. In InDesign, there's also a template, but I here have pre-configured templates uh, that need no editing. So there is a linkage between data sources uh, with the templates and uh, PDFs are generated automatically. This is an example of SI Aploid. They're holding the uh, simultaneous lecture now next door. And uh, in the Akineo PIM system, I select a template for data sheets. And then through the uh, Print Cloud Datasheet service, uh, the uh, PDF is generated automatically. And in the Akaneo PIM, it can be displayed. So this is uh, the link with templates. And the third version is the template free option, where I only have the data sources from the PIM DAM and I link these with a set of rules. This can be an XML set of rules. So in other words, I, there's no templates, no InDesign. There's only a set of rules that actually takes the data flow and releases or produces the release documents. I'm, I know this uh, from companies with technical data sheets. And uh, there uh, we see the effect uh, of the data first. They work in content only, complete com black box, and then you 
they push the button and this is all all automatically released to the uh, um, documents but this only works with a high degree of standardization of documents but the users say that the limitation uh, by InDesign is no longer um, a limitation and that uh, I have a better adaptation of the layout to the content. So this is the experience people acquired with it. Then we have another uh, point to uh, address uh, in terms of standardization. So this is often a brief for me when I work as a system selection consultant because companies have posters, billboards and ads in many different uh, scales and this involves a lot of effort when the agency needs to adapt the formats each time. Depending on how many adaptations this is, um, this involves a lot of effort. Now I can actually solve this problem with an intelligent, a smart master template. I say I have one template and I actually embed a set of rules that uh, uh, allows me to automatically transfer an ad into various formats with the same content. And um, this is uh, rules-based AI again. And this brings me back to the point I made initially. When I have the same entries that I submit for such an ad, then I always get the same uh, released uh, result. If I had a self-earning AI, uh, this uh, would probably uh, produce a different result time and again. Here, the data is taken from the data source uh, and uh, um, displayed in this box, for instance. How does this work, that you always get the right uh, section of the image? I know this from another system where when I set the rules, I say, please define the part of the image to be featured centrally in, in the templates. You can define this, you can lay this down, and then the AI uh, actually realizes this uh, smartly. This brings us to the next point, workflow automation. And I broke, I've broken it down into process-oriented and tool-oriented. Of course, there is no process-oriented automation without tools, uh, nor the other way around. But just um, to um, describe the focal points. An important uh, point for workflow automation can be um, BPM, business process uh, modeling. Um, this is an ISO, based on an ISO standard. And either on BP and N basis or based from on in-house developments, such workflows are used in the tools in order to control processes in a more or less automatic way. This brings us to the buzzword marketing automation. There, the workflows that are linked with activities, tools, with events, with uh, times, are uh, actually uh, running through, passing through fully automatically in a marketing automation tool. Whereas in other systems, it may well be that there's still a release process involved where somebody, a human, has to release the workflow uh, manually. Well, and... Um, on the topic of process-oriented uh, 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 workflow automation, I wanted to introduce you to Google system because I find this very um, far-reaching in this area. Here you have the various Google channels, uh, ranging from the search network uh, the, to the display network, discover, this is a new fe news feed like YouTube. Um, when I advertise as a company, then I have um, to work without performance max and create the advertising materials for all of those individual channels. With the performance max, the advertiser no longer has to do this. Um, they simply enter individual elements into the platform. So texts of various lengths, long texts, short texts, uh, headings. 
then all of the logos and different formats, images and even videos. And Google then automatically generates the advertising materials for the individual channels and also takes over the control. Important is uh, to know that also videos can be entered because otherwise Google <laughs> will generate these videos automatically and um, uh, this is probably not necessarily the result you would like to see. In order to be able to control the advertiser, the media agency uh, can uh, set uh, various parameters, target group signals, uh, uh, keywords for searches, or uh, roles um, uh, like uh, do I want to optimize by price, etc. I can still manage or have to manage it but uh, the effort involved is uh, so much smaller than for having to do this for all of the individual channels. And the experiences obtained by companies and agencies working with this is um, that this already works uh, very well. Um, they lament that you cannot control a lot of things anymore. But this is the trade-off basically that uh, the, the, pay, the price you pay for automation that you lose control of things. And all of this is, of course, AI-based. Well, tool-oriented workflow automation, this is Zapier and May as examples. Um, these are platforms, Zapier and Make, that um, uh, integrate certain or can integrate certain tools as standard applications and actually compose it into a workflow. With Zapier, I think they have thousands of applications and tools uh, that are integrated as a standard. This is an example made with Make. This is a platform again in the automotive sector. Here a user wants to obtain a leasing quote for a specific car. I've anonymized this uh, because automotive makers are very sensitive uh, when it comes to the representation of their cars and where they're used. So I enter the user data in a web form on a HubSpot and then the user data uh, are sent to the HubSpot there. They're combined with the CRM, with car data, and then by email, um, this is sent to the leasing partner. And this is where the workflow ends. And the leasing partner then receives an email and then actually processes and handles this uh, inquiry. Here, the various tools are um, composed into one workflow. F for me, this is more of a partial process, this application. Another tool oriented uh, is uh, the robotic process automation, RPA. Here again, I have a platform. Here is a UI path. This is a market leader in this area. And UiPath also offers various applications that are all already integrated in the platform as a standard. In SAP, this is used frequently, or Google Excel applications are all integrated here. Here, very often manual uh, activities on the front end level that I would normally execute can be uh, rendered in an automatic fashion by this application. Here these applications are linked with um, uh, objects or entities. I can com uh, create complete Excel spreadsheets or email attachments, for instance, are uh, actually transferred to a backup medium. Or in the area of data migration, mm, this is uh, a nice option. All of this um, should be a continuous process without any interruptions and it is used where there are no real-time interfaces or where real-time uh, user interfaces are not wanted.
Also important for these tool-oriented applications uh, is the low-code, no-code rule. Since I am on a menu-driven um, platform, I can compile applications to workflow. I no longer need a programmer. I no longer have to know how to program matters. I don't have to be an IT expert. This brings me to the real-time uh, user interfaces. This is uh, the usual way of connecting um, elements. The REST APIs are used here. Uh, REST APIs are based on web technolo technologies, uh, HTTPS and uh, standard parameters. Uh, here data is exchanged. And an example, Viba House. This is a prefabricated house manufacturer. And the uh, sales people, around a thousand in Germany, um, actually uh, uh, do guided tours of show houses and of course want to run advertising campaigns for this. The salesperson here in the marketing portal enters his uh, personal campaign data, the date, the appointment date and the time and gets the uh, data of the prospects uh, f through the API, the REST API. And then the individual data uh, is linked with the templates and uh, the prospect data and as we saw this with the automatic creator then um, automatically um, advertising materials are released and after the end of the campaign this is actually returned back to the original state. What's important here is that I have two interfaces here, uh, two REST APIs that I have to maintain and configure. One for receiving the data of the uh, receiver and the other REST API for the campaign data. I have two interfaces here, but uh, the number is often increasing because I have more and more data sources. I have different uh, databases and I have more different systems and more media channels that uh, I uh, have to connect and configure. In lectures here, we at times hear the buzzword best of breed systems. These are systems that use uh, um, user f uh, interfaces to be connected. And the more individual interfaces I have, the more difficult it gets to maintain all of this. And uh, this is why I have API management systems, data hubs. And uh, I can uh, create a central uh, level for authentication. I do this just once for all interfaces and only the data flow from the individual data sources must be configured. And this can then be uh, managed or compiled on a data hub level where the data can be compiled in profiles and then uh, be released to the various data channels. One important area of application is programmatic printing, for instance. And we also have an example here. Uh, this was kindly provided by Konrad and Laudert. This is a Konrad mailing. Uh, that gives me media data, product data, CRM data, and I also have web shop data with uh, recommendation engine information. So what will the uh, recipients most probably buy? And uh, this is then all compiled in these mailings. We heard in lectures um, that uh, the print area has come under a lot of pressure and the experience acquired is that the target group specific mailings achieve response rates of between 6 and 9%. And not only the Deutsche Post is saying this, the German mail, 
but also companies do so. Orbi runs such studies, or Conrad, for instance, and they have actually confirmed these uh, figures. And then uh, there is the web shop, web tracking in real time. And this is what I return into the data hub. And in real time, I can actually release adapted um, media channel outputs. So this is really the, the art. And uh, this... Uh, uh, creates a situation where the product data compilation can be recipient specific. So the, even the ranges are compiled in an ad adapted manner. Well, and in summary, the criteria for automation it is a conceptual offer. I have to be able to save time and money, otherwise it makes no money. These efforts have to pay off. And what I found very important is uh, that you should question where content structures can be reduced or layout structures can be reduced and streamlined. This is the point we just mentioned. That. Um, I really make sure do I really have to have different lengths of text for different channels or does it make more sense to make the text length consistent or for the layout uh, do I really have to have a disruptor on every fifth page is it really necessary and do I really require InDesign for placing it or could I probably solve this in a different way I mean disruptors can also be generated in a, in a rules based manner. And then uh, automation uh, for many um, tasks are necessary. Certain things can no longer be done with auto automation. The uh, example of uh, real-time personalization without, without automation, this is no longer possible. The user enters the website and he she sees immediately, um, based on his or her previous activities, what they're interested in. And we saw it with performance max mm, controlling many media channels or to uh, reduce time to market for multi-language uh, versions. These are all uh, requirements that uh, automation um, um, complies with. And those who opt for automation have the competitive edge because the efforts uh, are increasing exponentially. And last point, I already mentioned this, and it's really important that we also have developments in the no-code, low-code uh, area. So I can actually combine applications uh, in a modular fashion without having any specific or requiring any specific IT knowledge. Well, on this note, I wish you lots of success uh, for your automation projects and look forward to questions. Thank you.